Hello and welcome to Tutorial CU. My name is Yannick and in this video I want to give you a brief introduction into SignalR and how you can use it to build any kind of application, real-time web functionality, such as any kind of chat application for example. Bye. So here I got like one web application, but I opened it two times. So I got two clients right now, one on the left side, one on the right side. The left one is called Peter, the right one will give it a name, Mark, let's say Peter, hi. Now we're gonna send it and as you can see, it's updating in real time on both sides. We don't have to refresh, right? So it's just like kind of a web socket. You maybe understand that it's some real time broadcasting, right? Hi Peter, how are you? You can see now, I send it on the right side on the right client and on the left client it updates. So right now it's uh, just hosted at my local host for sure. But if you would upload it anywhere and we would have 10, well, uh, 10 clients, then 10 clients would be able to chat in real time without the need of refreshing the page. Now chat applications are just an example. You can for sure use that kind of real time broadcasting for nearly everything else wherever it makes sense for your specific business use case. Alrighty, so now let's get started. Let me show you how you can build that on your own. So I will not write the entire code, I will just walk you through what you have to do in detail so that it really doesn't take too long and you can still follow along or just sit there and watch the video and become an amazing developer just by paying attention. Awesome, so here we need a NuGet package and it's called Microsoft ASP.NET Core Signal R Common. So things have changed. Back in the days, you were able to simply use that Microsoft ASP.NET Core Signal R, but as you can tell, this package version is deprecated. So right now we have to use Signal R Common. Awesome. Now go ahead, install the package, and that's it. What we have to do on this side. Now, if we go to our program and scroll down, we can see that we add to our service container Signal R, right? So add Signal R service to the specified service collection. Now by adding this, we are able to set up a Signal R hub, which we can use to connect to, so that clients connect to our Signal R hub. Now, if we scroll down, and that's very important, we have to make sure that we, for example, specify a specific hub where our clients can connect to. For example, I set up a chat hub, right? That's a class I've connected. I will just get to that in a second. And I called it or I registered at the endpoint slash chat. So if you have different, well, real time functionalities, you can register multiple hubs for sure. Now, we configure an endpoint for that. So we have that map hub, right? That's the functionality that is getting provided from SignalR. Now that class that I use here, chat hub, let me just go into that. It's basically a new class and it's inherited from the hub class from SignalR. That's very important. And inside here, the real magic starts to happen. Well, here we got another magical thing. That's our C-Shop Progress Academy. It's a self-paced online course in video format, right? And it teaches you full stack c -sharp development to boost your career, helping you to land your very first job as a developer or earn more money as an experienced developer. So I'm absolutely confident to say that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a c -sharp developer. So go ahead, check it out right now. You can find the link in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. And please never forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already because you are interested in becoming a better developer and we can help you with that. So that's enough reason for you to go ahead and click on that subscribe button right now. Also, if you like that topic signal R and XP, make sure to give this video a thumb up. Alrighty, now let's continue. Before we take a look at that send message method right here, let's switch over to the index page, which is really showing the graphical user interface, which you have just seen, right? So. Here you can write down your name. That's just basic HTML. We got uh, a button for sure. And we also have our discussion list where all the chat entries, the messages will get displayed. Now, very important, we need to add the signal hour package for the front end right here. Now, let me open up something. There we go. That's JS Deliver, right? That's a CDN, a content delivery network, where you can simply grab that package. It's called at Microsoft Signal R. And as you can tell, this is the client, right? So we need a Signal R server. We already installed the package and now we need clients. So for that kind of broadcasting, we have clients that connect to the hub, as I said, to the Signal R server. Let's call it like that. And then you can simply say, okay, the client send, uh, send the message, right? And then the server receives that message and forwards the information to all connected clients. That's basically how networking 
in such a scenario is working. All right, so go ahead and copy that over if you need it. As I said, make sure it's Microsoft SignalR, it's the ASP.NET Core SignalR client. That's very, very important. Now afterwards, as I said, since that's the client, we need to connect the client to our hub. So our hub is like our SignalR server, right? And clients need to connect to servers. So here we set up a connection, new SignalR hub connection builder, right? It uses our URL, so our uh, server URL from our ASP.NET Core application. It's hosted in my local host, so it's using my local host slash chat. And it's slash chat because in our program CS, we set up the hub for slash chat. So we connect both of them together so that all of our clients connect to the correct hub. Now afterwards, we will build that right here. And then we start the connection. So simply call connection start. And then we just catch for any, well, errors that could appear so that we can see them in the console, right? Now, next up, we simply grab our button right here. We add an event listener on the click event. So nothing really special. So once we click that send button, we get the input from the user field, right? So what's your name? And then we grab the message from the message input. So let's say hi, Peter or whatever. Now that info gets saved here. Nothing special, as I said. And then we simply take the connection and we invoke. So we run, right? Invoking is nothing else than just calling a method or a function, for example. We want to invoke the send message method and we want to provide two information, user and message. So this is optional. You can also only in, uh, just submit the information about the message, for example, no problem. But it's crucial, it's very important that you make sure that this signature, so send message, first parameter, second parameter, is matching the structure of your hub. I will get to that in a second. Now, afterwards, we simply catch for any specific errors here if something appears that we get the information about that. Now, the signature here, send message, user message. Let's take a look at our chat hub that we have just created, right? Chat hub. Here you can see we got a public async task. It's called send message, right? So it's the same name and it has the same signature, well, parameters, user and message. It's very important that both of them are matching. Send message, user message, send message, user message. And now, as I said, just keep in mind, Peter is connecting to our hub. He says in the chat, hi, he clicks on send message. He sends that information to our hub right send message and now it will get broadcasted to all connected clients so the server will now tell every client hey peter sent a message here's his input or his name and his input so he wrote down message right and now we're going to invoke on all clients something which is called receive message that's also just a function or a method i will get to that in a second but just make sure to understand that so peter wants to send something so he writes down, hey, he sends it, our hub takes note of it and submits all connected clients of that hub that Peter has sent something. Now, the server, as I said, notifies everyone by invoking the receive message method and submitting the information that we want to forward. So for example, Peter's name and Peter's message. Now let's switch over to the last step in the index.cs HTML, if we scroll down, you can see that we have a listener here, connection on receive message, right? And that's exactly the one that we are, sorry, invoking right here, receive message. So once we send that to the client and we are, well, listening to that event or to that, well, call, we can then just invoke that part here once it appears. We will simply, or we are simply taking user and message again. We are building just a small string, user, then a colon and then the message. We create a list item and we append it to the list, uh, which is called discussion, which you can find right here. That's basically what's happening. So Peter wants to send a message. The hub takes note of it and forwards the information to all connected clients by invoking the receive message method or function. Great. So let's start our application again, just to take another look on it. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward once you understand how that kind of connection broadcasting or real time functionality, however you want to name it is working. Right. So if we write down Peter test now, since Peter himself is a client, he will also get the callback. Well, kind of callback. He will also get the information from the hub, the receive message event. So this is why he also sees his 
own message. Great, and that's it for this video. So if you have learned something new, if you are a better developer now, make sure to subscribe to our channel, smash the like button, write down into the comment section below what you want to see, what .NET topics you're interested in. For sure, check out our C Sharp Progress Academy because it turns you into a better C Sharp developer and that's what you for sure are interested in. So thanks for watching and see you next time.